أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قيبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله المصطفى الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome to another episode of our tafsir page by page and inshallah ta'ala today we are on page number 94 which is in the fifth juz Surah An-Nisa In the previous episode we spoke about a number of verses of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah An-Nisa that dealt with a couple of topics. The first of those topics was the issue of killing someone accidentally and the commands that Allah Azza wa Jal gives and the expiation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places upon that particular issue and that is that someone who commits this act of accidentally killing someone and that's someone who does so without any intention to harm or to hurt but they just happen to kill someone as a result of their actions and so there is a expiation and a uh, fidya a a, a, um, a a blood money that is due upon such a person and then Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the sin and the punishment of those people who commit murder intentionally and because that is one of the greatest and gravest of sins in the sharia Today we begin from verse number 95 and today's passage speaks about a number of the rulings concerning jihad and fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah azza wa says in verse number 95, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا يستوي القاعدون من المؤمنين غير أولي الضرر والمجاهدون في سبيل الله بأموالهم وأنفسهم فضل الله المجاهدين بأموالهم وأنفسهم على القاعدين درجة وَكُلَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَى وَفَضَّلَ اللَّهُ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ عَلَى الْقَاعِدِينَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Those believers who stay at home, apart from those with an incapacity, are not equal to those who commit themselves and their possessions to striving in Allah's way. Allah has raised such people to a rank above those who stay at home, although He has promised all believers a good reward. Those who strive are favored with a tremendous reward above those who stay at home. These verses and today's passage will speak about and deal with a number of issues concerning the issues of jihad and fighting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we've explained previously, the Quran is a book that deals with all issues and it contains guidance for all matters. And so there is guidance within it for a father and for a mother and for a child and for a person who's involved in business and for the ruler and the Muslim judge and the general. And so there are certain rulings that apply in certain contexts and from them are the rulings of jihad and its details are found within the books of fiqh that I've explained them in great levels of detail. In verse number 95, Allah Azza wa is making a comparison between two groups of people. Those who are willing to go out and fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those people who do not do so. Those people who continue to stay or they stay at home and they prefer not to fight. And this two categorization or these two categories that are being mentioned in this particular verse, all of them are believers, as opposed to in some of the previous verses that we have covered, in which Allah Azza wa Jal makes the distinction between those who fight in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, who are the believers, and those who stay back from the fighting because they are because of their hypocrisy. That's a different issue. So there are people who don't fight because of hypocrisy, because they don't believe, because in their hearts they have kufr and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this verse, verse number 95 or 96 and so on, these verses speak about believers. They are all mu'mineen. All of them are believers in Allah Azza wa Jal. But for one reason or another, a group from amongst them do not go out and fight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these two groups are not equal. The group who chooses to fight for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and is willing to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously in the correct context with all of the rulings of the Sharia being adhered to and with the correct leadership in place and the correct rulings uh, or the correct, uh, the correct call for jihad being given, all of that stuff's in place. Those people who choose to fight in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal are not equal to those people who choose not to fight in that particular circumstance or scenario. Unless they stay behind for a valid reason, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, except for those people who have some disability, some incapacity, they have a valid reason to stay home. 
and there are a number of valid reasons as we know as is mentioned again in the books of Islam it is said for example that when this verse was revealed and Allah Azza wa made the comparison between these two groups of people the part of the verse concerning the incapacity that they are an exception to this rule had yet to be revealed and so Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu an, the companion, the famous companion who was blind, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he said, O Messenger of Allah, what about people like me? He's blind, he doesn't have the ability to go out and to participate upon the battlefield. And then there are other people who have valid excuses and reasons that preclude them from being able to go and participate also. And so Allah azza wa revealed this part of the verse also, غَيْرُ أُولِ And this is from the... Uh, the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal from the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His kindness to His to His slaves, and that is that Allah Azza wa Jal gives people with valid excuses an exemption, and that's a general rule throughout the Sharia as we know. There are certain things that if you cannot do in Salah, you have different rules in Salah. Certain things that if you cannot do whilst fasting, you're exempted from fasting. Certain things that make you not have to go for Hajj, for example. And so this is the general ruling in the Sharia, ah, and likewise the rulings of jihad are similar. So for example, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Battle of Badr, uh, Uthman radiallahu an, the famous companion and the Khalifa, he didn't participate in the Battle of Badr. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave to him a full share of war booty. And the reason why he didn't go is because his wife, Ruqayya radiallahu anha, was extremely ill. So the Prophet وسلم, said to him, stay home and look after your wife. And she ended up passing away from the illness radiallahu anha wa ardaha. And so therefore, Uthman radiallahu anha had a valid excuse, a valid exemption from the Prophet وسلم, And what shows that it was valid is that the Prophet وسلم, gave him his full share of war booty, the spoils of war. As if he had been on the battlefield because he was prepared to go and ready to go. But a valid excuse held him back. So Allah Azza wa exempts these people from this particular ruling. For everyone else, however, those who go out and are willing to sacrifice their lives and their wealth for the sake of Allah Azza wa are better than those who don't go out. As Allah Azza wa then goes on to say, فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ عَلَى الْقَاعِدِينَ دَرَجَ Allah Azza wa has raised those people who are willing to fight, sacrifice their wealth and their lives, he has raised them a rank above those who are not willing to do so, those who stay at home. And to all of them Allah has promised good. Why? Because they're all believers. They're all upon Tawheed. And if they die upon Tawheed, then Allah Azza wa has guaranteed Jannah for the believers. So all of them are upon good. But Allah Azza wa is saying that the believer is someone who shouldn't just want the minimum when there are opportunities to gain greater reward, like for example, the month of Ramadan. Like, for example, those people that are able to go and perform Hajj. Like, for example, certain times and places where there is an opportunity to increase in reward, then the believer is the one who should hasten towards that increase in reward. Because who doesn't want more reward? And who doesn't want, inshallah, a greater chance of entering into Jannah? And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal then says, وَفَضَّلَ اللَّهُ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ عَلَى الْقَاعِدِينَ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا That those who strive for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah has favored them and given them a tremendous reward above and over those who stay at home. And Allah expands upon that great reward in the next verse, in verse number 96, and He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, دَرَجَاتٍ مِّنْهُ وَمَغْفِرَةً وَرَحْمَةً وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا High ranks are conferred by Him, meaning by Allah, as well as forgiveness and mercy, and indeed Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people, Allah Azza wa Jal says, they will be given a tremendous reward. Reward in ranks and station in paradise. Reward in terms of the forgiveness of Allah Azza wa Reward in terms of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the virtues of those people who strive in the path of Allah Azza wa and those people who sacrifice themselves for the sake of Allah Azza wa their virtues and their rewards are mentioned throughout the Quran and mentioned in numerous ahadith of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the next verse, verse number 97, he continues and he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَفَّاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ قَالُوا كُنَّا مُسْتَضْعَفِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسِعَةً فَتُهَاجِرُوا فِيهَا فَأُولَئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا when the angels take the souls of those who have wronged themselves, they ask them, what circumstances were you in? 
They reply, we were oppressed in this land. And the angels say, but wasn't Allah's earth not spacious enough for you to migrate to some other place? These people will have hell as their refuge and an evil destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, speaks in this verse concerning a group of people who were upon Iman or they were Muslims, but they refused to migrate for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. They stayed in the lands of the Mushrikeen. Or those people who didn't have an issue with Islam or they didn't necessarily believe or disbelieve in Islam, but they continued to stay in the lands of the disbelievers and they refused to migrate. As we know, as we mentioned before in a previous episode, when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina with the vast majority of his companions, there were people who didn't migrate. And those people who didn't migrate were of two categories. Number one were those people who didn't have the ability to migrate because they're too weak or they're too poor or they're being oppressed or they're being imprisoned. And so they're unable physically to migrate. And those people who chose not to migrate, they chose to remain in, in the city of Mecca. Those people that remain in the city of Mecca, even if they're believers, in one way or another, sometimes they may uh, indirectly or unintentionally help the non-Muslims against the Muslims. And so in that time, because the Muslims in the time of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina are waging war, they're at, they're, at, they're at war with the people of Quraysh. And these people are believers and they're staying in Quraysh. They're, in Quraysh, they're, they're amongst the Quraysh. And that's why it said, and Allah knows best, that even in the Battle of Badr, from amongst the army of Quraysh that came out to fight the Muslims, amongst them were people from this category who had accepted Islam and they were believers but they were either concealing their Iman because they didn't want it to be known amongst the Meccans or they just happened to remain in Mecca uh, even though they had the ability and the choice to go to Medina and so therefore what they're doing is that they're giving them a level of strength to the non-Muslims. Allah Azza wa Jal says that these people have oppressed themselves, they've wronged themselves, they're committing a sin not necessarily because they're living in those lands if there's peace there and as we know now many Muslims live in non-Muslim lands this is a different issue but we're talking about in the time, in the context of where the Prophet wasallam is in and those companions or those people, those, those Muslims are remaining in the city of Mecca and the problems that they may cause, especially when they then go on to fight the Muslims in the time of the Prophet wasallam. Allah Azza wa Jal calls these people, those people who have wronged themselves, they've oppressed themselves. And so when the angels come to take their souls, they will be asked, what, it is, what, what, what is it that you were doing? What were your circumstances? And they will reply, we were oppressed in the land. We were too weak to be able to go, meaning we didn't have the means and the, and the opportunity to go and to migrate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that these people had the ability, but what they mean by their own weakness in this regard is that they had interests that prevented them from going. Financial interests, business, land, property, and they know that if they leave, they give up everything. They leave it all behind and they abandon everything for others to come and to take and they will be given no compensation. And that's essentially what happened to those companions that migrated to the city of Medina. How many of those Muslims that migrated were left essentially then with nothing? No money, no land, no property. Even the Prophet ﷺ himself, the Prophet ﷺ left from Mecca to Medina. What does he have in return? Nothing. And that is why when the Prophet ﷺ was returning to Mecca, the companions many years later, they said to him, O Messenger of Allah, where will you leave? Where will you live? Where will you stay in Mecca? Where are you going to spend your time in Mecca? The Prophet said, And did Aqil leave anything behind for us? Who is Aqil? Aqil is the son of Abu Talib, the first cousin of the Prophet. But because Aqil became a Muslim later on, when Abu Talib died, his inheritance goes to Aqil. Because a Muslim doesn't inherit from a non-Muslim and vice versa. And so therefore the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali radiallahu anhu, who's also one of the sons of Abu Talib, Ja'far radiallahu anhu, also, also one of the sons of Abu Talib, they were Muslims. And because they were Muslims, they didn't inherit. Aqil is a non-Muslim at the time. He later on becomes a Muslim as well, radiallahu anhu. But he, at that time, is a non-Muslim, so he takes the inheritance. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu said, and has Aqi left behind anything for us? Meaning, he took everything at that time and now it says, rather where I will go, is I will go to that same place where we were boycotted by the Quraysh during the early period of Mecca. And that story, I think, is well known also. If not, then it can be found in the books of Sirah. The point here being that the many of them stayed behind for that reason. Because if you migrated, 
you lost everything. And that is why many of the companions lost everything. All of the wealth that they had in their land and their property, they essentially gave up for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. So when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala speaks about those people who strive for His cause and are willing to sacrifice their wealth and their lives, it isn't just a small statement. It doesn't just mean they're giving a bit of charity. It doesn't mean that they're just giving zakah every year or sadaqah. What it literally means is that they're willing to give up everything that they own of wealth, everything that they possess. And me and you and every person that's listening to this knows just theoretically how difficult that would be. If someone came to you and said, give away your house, give away your car, give away your clothes, give away all of the money that you have, all of your assets essentially that have any worth, give them away and leave with hardly anything. How difficult would that be? And then imagine and double upon that or include upon that the fact that you have a wife, the fact that you have a husband, the fact that you have children, the fact that you have elderly parents, how extremely difficult that would be. And that is why Allah Azza wa honors and praises those companions, the Muhajireen, because of what they did and what they were willing to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Azza wa says to these people, or the angels will say to these people who claim that they were unable to migrate, Alam takun Allah yuasi'a. Wasn't Allah's earth expansive enough, wide enough that you could go and migrate as and where you please? And that is especially at the time of the Prophet where there's no borders, there's no visas, there's no citizenship in that sense. It's very easy for people to go or relatively easy in the sense that it's possible for you to move from one place to another. You can go as opposed to our time now where it's very difficult because you don't have a claim to other countries. You can't just go and be there and have rights as citizens do and buy and sell and live and so on. It's different now, the situation's changed. And so therefore the ruling has to reflect that also. However, in the time of the Prophet wasallam, it's relatively open and free for people to leave. And so Allah Azza wa says that those people who do harm to Allah Azza wa if they are disbelievers and so on, know that they will enter into the fire. And sometimes it may be, and Allah Azza wa knows best, that some of those Muslims, because of their unintended actions, may also be punished for that cause. And Allah Azza wa knows best, but no doubt every Muslim, irrespective of their actions, uh, and their and their misdeeds will eventually enter into Jannah, as we know, as as established in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that no believer remains in the fire for eternity. In verse number ninety-eight, then Allah azza wa jal makes an exception to this rule as well. So these people that chose not to migrate, even though they had the ability to do so, Allah azza wa jal also gives an exception to this rule. And what is that exception? Allah azza wa jal says. إِلَّا الْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاءِ وَالْوِلْدَانِ لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ حِيلَةً وَلَا يَهْتَدُونَ سَبِيلًا But not so the truly helpless men, women and children who have no means in their power nor any way to leave. So Allah Azza wa says that this is the exception as we said those people who remained behind from amongst them were those people who literally didn't have the ability to leave. They weren't able to do so. From amongst them were women from amongst them were men who were in prison, from amongst them were young children who couldn't just go and leave the city of Mecca by themselves and walk in the desert all the way to Medina. These people have a genuine excuse. As we mentioned before, when Allah Azza is making the comparison between those people who strive in Allah's path and those who stay home, Allah exempts from them those people who have no ability to do so. And that is from the mercy of Allah Azza wa So here, for example, you have companions. It is said, for example, as is in the narration of Ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says that me and my mother were from amongst the people that were included in this verse. We were from the weak. His mother was unable to leave and he was a young child at the time, wasn't able to leave. But they were believers. They had already accepted Islam. He says that we were from amongst those people. And so they were only able to migrate towards the conquest of Mecca and so on when things were open and easier for them and the Muslims had strength and power and then it was relatively safe. That's when they migrated to Medina and settled there. Otherwise, they were, for the vast majority of the life of the Prophet wasallam, remaining in Mecca. These people have a valid excuse, and Allah Azza wa Jal therefore exempts them, as he says in verse number 99, Allah may well pardon these, for he is the most pardoning and most forgiving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as for these types of people, Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive them. Why? Because they have a valid excuse. And therefore, 
in all of the rulings of the Sharia, this is something as we see, which is one of the most beautiful parts of our religion. And that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes into account your circumstances, your genuine circumstances. Not like those people in the previous verse who are making an excuse, but it's not a genuine excuse. So not every excuse is accepted. And not every excuse is genuine. And not every excuse exempts you from rulings of the Sharia. It has to be an excuse that Allah Azza wa considers to be valid in the Sharia, that the Sharia itself says is genuine in this particular context for this particular ruling so that you may be exempt. And then the exemption also depends upon what Allah Azza wa has then allowed you to be exempted from. So for example, in Salah, if someone's not feeling well, Salah, the exemption means that if you can't stand, you sit down. It doesn't mean that you don't pray. As opposed to, for example, fasting. If you're unwell, you don't fast that day. But again, you have to make it up after the month of Ramadan. And so each one will depend upon the validity of that excuse and what it then turns to in terms of the exemption or what it goes to in terms of the uh, substitute ruling. So therefore, this is from the beauty of our religion. And that is that there are certain people who genuinely are unable to do certain acts of worship, are unable to uphold certain laws of the Sharia, are unable, to, and Allah Azza wa Jal from His mercy has given to those people their exemptions dependent upon their circumstances. And those people who are sincere, those people who intended to do their full deeds, if Allah Azza wa decrees for them a valid excuse, then they still get the full reward as the Prophet told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith that someone who, who becomes sick, Allah Azza wa gives to them the full reward of that which they used to do whilst they were resident and whilst they were, they were in full health. So today, you know, someone, for example, is always, always prayed standing up, always prayed standing up, never made it. And now they're unable to pray standing up for a month or two because of an illness or because of some injury that occurred to them. And they sit down. Allah Azza wa gives them the reward as if they were standing up. Allah Azza wa gives them the reward as if they were praying in full because that is how the mercy of Allah Azza wa works. In verse number 100, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to say, and this is the final verse that we will take today, inshallah ta'ala. Allah Azza wa says, وَمَن يُهَاجِرْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَثِيرًا وَسَعَةً وَمَن يَخْرُجْ مِن بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكُ الْمَوْتُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Anyone who migrates for Allah's cause will find many a refuge and great plentifulness in the earth. And if anyone leaves home as a migrant towards Allah and his messenger and is then overtaken by death, his reward from Allah is sure. Indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about the reason as to why those, some of those people didn't migrate from Mecca to Medina. And that is, as we said, because of some financial interest because of the assets that they had, because of the property and the land that they owned and the fear of losing this. Allah Azza wa says that whoever migrates for the sake of Allah will find in, upon the earth a refuge. You will find a place that will take you. You will find a place where you can go and worship Allah Azza wa Jal and you will find sa'a. You will find expansiveness. You will find plentifulness, meaning Allah's rizq will come to you in a different way. Just as those companions who did migrate to the Prophet وسلم, came to Medina, they found things, whether some of them had to live in the masjid and they became from the homeless companions known as al Sufa, or whether others from amongst them were struggling and it took them time to again build up themselves and build up a job and an income and some steady type of stability there in the city of Medina. It may have taken them time, but Allah gave to them wealth and Allah blessed them. And then especially once the Muslim expansions began, Allah Azza wa Jal gave to them wealth and gave to them a great deal of sustenance. And so Allah Azza wa Jal says that there is always the risk of Allah Azza wa Jal. If it is written for you, it will come to you. Whether you're in one country or another, whether you stay or you migrate, what Allah has decreed will come to you. And so this is an issue of Iman, it's an issue of trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, it's an issue of having Yaqeen in Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala makes His affairs easy for those who wish to do so. And then Allah Azza wa says, and even if you were to migrate for Allah's sake and for his messenger's sake, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then you were to die, death would, were to come upon you, then you have achieved the reward that Allah Azza wa will set out for you. And that also therefore shows that if a person embarks upon an action and they have the sincere intention for that deed, even if they're unable to fulfill it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to them their reward. Someone has the intention and they begin a good project, 
to help the community, to help people in society. You may not live to see the fruition of that project, but the fact that you started it with sincerity and with conviction, even if death comes to you at some point, Allah Azza wa will give to you the, your full reward. And that is something which we see in the Sharia, as is in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about that man who killed a hundred men from the people of the children of Israel, Bani Israel, and then he was told to migrate. To, leave, to make tawbah, to turn back to Allah and to migrate from that land of evil. And so he made tawbah and he migrated. During his journey, he dies. So he's yet to get to his destination. He's yet to start his new life. He's yet to start his new relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. He's still on the way and he dies. And Allah Azza wa Jal forgives him. Because the fact that he made that journey, was willing to do so, made that effort, took those first steps, it is a sign of his sincerity and a sign, inshallah, of his Tawbah, and so Allah Azza wa Jal from His mercy, He forgave him, and that is how Allah Azza wa Jal forgives people who are sincere for His cause and for His sake. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, we come to the end of today's episode. Barakallahu feekum, wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.